Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? It's Blanco de Slam, and today I have a big video for you guys. It's the Cluck and Bell farm raid. I have a full guide, so that's going to be setups, finale, everything you need to know, of course. For those of you who live on Mars, we have been teased this for the last few weeks now. This is the new heist slash raid slash contact mission, whatever you want to call it, where we do team up with Vincent, our old buddy from the casino, and it's absolutely awesome. I really enjoyed my time playing it. And for those of you who have already played it and just want kind of a full guide, on your second go around how to do it maybe a little more efficient this is for you and then of course if you have never played it this is most definitely for you there's vincent there's our guy but before we get into today's video of course hit that like and subscribe button turn the bell notifications on to stay up to date with any new drops of course i do make consistent gta content and let's get into the video man so first off you are gonna have to meet vincent at the precinct which is located right here it's gonna be marked with a v on the map shortly after you go into free world or free roam or whatever lobby uh, you know invite only or public you'll get a phone call from vincent telling you to meet him here and you pretty much come over here and start up the mission now the interesting with this high slash raid is it's a contact mission so you actually don't need to own any properties you don't need to buy anything to be able to access this you can actually access this from level one so let's get into the first setup mission of course it's called the slush fund it does trigger this um animation scene it's very simple i'm gonna skip it because we've all seen it like a hundred times through the leak videos already but the first mission is very simple very easy you're just going to take out a few guys and you're going to take the money out of these washing machines to be honest with you the whole raid is pretty easy and straightforward i think it's very beginner friendly and like i mentioned earlier due to the fact you don't need to own a business to access this it's definitely beginner friendly but you're going to see through this playthrough it's very easy like i said take out a few guys extract the money from the washing machines and that's pretty much it you're good to go right now at the end of these missions you are going to be required to pretty much bring all the supplies back to this lockup slash garage which is where vincent is basically holding this operation and keeps all the equipment now for the second mission it's called breaking and entering you're gonna have to steal a laptop from this guy on the boardwalk he's gonna be right here playing on that little arcade game you can literally just walk up behind them and steal it then it's gonna ask you to go to the terabyte be careful these drones are pretty pretty good man they were definitely hitting their shots on me and uh eating my health i had to snack up a couple times and sometimes they'll just charge at you and try to explode on you so you got to take out the drones before you go in the terabyte it is going to spawn like eight to ten drones but again very simple just stay calm be you know be be uh patient and just take out the drones and then go into the terabyte like I said, very beginner friendly, very easy. It's nothing too complicated about any of these missions. You're going to steal the hacking device and the same thing like the first mission. You're just going to go on and take it over to Vincent's garage. Oh, excuse me. Before you take it to Vincent's garage, you have to do this awesome train sequence where you pull up on the cartel. You steal a key from one of the soldiers that you kill, and then you're going to steal this train and ram your way through the train track. So you actually don't have to bring this to the lockup for Vincent. The mission will end while you're in the tunnels. But I thought this mission was pretty cool. I believe this is like the first time we get to drive a train in GTA. So very exciting. Very cool, man. This honestly, I really enjoyed my first playthrough of this raid. I will get into the end of the video. If I think it's worth it, I'll give my feedback, but that will come later. Next up, we have our weapons and gear. Personally, I went with option B, which is a little bit tougher. It is the professional um, difficulty. I think C is the hardest, though. So B is kind of in that middle, middle tier, middle zone. But it's still very good, man. Honestly, you don't need to go to see. It's way out in Blaine County. I just went with option B because it has a nice weapon loadout. You get an SMG silence, then like the battle rifle, I believe. You're just going to clear out a couple guys on this ship. There we go. We got our weapons. Then you're going to head back upstairs and grab your gear, which is essentially like your bulletproof vest. And like I said, the professional one should be able to get it done. The cluck and bell raid is not that hard. You should be able to get it done relatively easy with just the professional gear. Now, key moment here. If you did collect more than one gear like i did i went to option a first which is the bad one though you don't want to use option a you have to confirm which weapons and gear you want to use with vincent through text message so make sure you confirm your professional or if you use like the military grade which i think is option c make sure you confirm it with him now next mission 
We have the getaway vehicle. I went again with option B, which is the coil raid. It's an electric car, which means it has really good acceleration, which means it's really good at getting away from people, right? So I don't think option C was required here either. I kind of just went with option B for both the weapons and gear and the getaway vehicle. It's very easy. Again, you're just going to go to location, take out a couple guys, hop in the car, use that little ramp to get over the gate and bring it over to this garage that Vincent sends you the coordinates for during the mission. And then you're just going to leave the garage and then leave the area and mission passed. Now, one thing I did notice, you don't get paid for the setup missions, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. I still really enjoyed my time playing this raid. Now, this next mission is definitely the most key setup mission out of all of them. It's the most vital and important. It's going to start off with you tailing these two vans. You're going to have to get pretty close behind them, activate the hacking device that we stole in that breaking and entering mission. And once you hack both the vans, you are going to get the coordinates of uh, like a factory where the cartel is you're also gonna have to kill one of the drivers to be able to take the driver outfit which is going to play a big part in being able to do the stealth approach later on so you want to make sure you get the cluck and bell outfit from one of the drivers because if you get caught during this mission and don't wipe the cctv footage you will not be able to do the stealth approach so pretty much just follow my footsteps here even if you get caught it's not that big of a deal because you could just kill everybody in an allotted amount of time and you still will be able to do the stealth approach but as you can see here these two trucks are freebies you won't be in their vision cones so you could just easily walk up to these first two trucks and just disarm them like i said they are freebies and like i said man this setup mission is the most vital to the entire heist slash raid because it does allow you it it determines whether you could do the stealth approach or you got to go loud so you want to be careful here i suggest using a melee weapon instead of a gun because sometimes the guns could get buggy and people could hear them or react to them even if they're silenced so these two guys here are going to be the key guys, the one working on the truck right here with the purple torch. And then the other guy that was over there to my left, we're going to take them out with a melee weapon. My weapon of choice was a wrench. I almost used the candy cane, but it ain't Christmas no more. So we're just going to use a good old wrench. We're in a mechanic shop, so why not? Bang, right over the head. Now you're going to disarm this truck, which these guys are blind, man. They must have adopted the same security guards from the Keo Perico heist because they're god awful. Now we're going to head over to the other pal over here, our other pal, who's just, uh, you know, minding his business, working on his truck, but we got things to do. We got a raid to complete. So he's going to have to take a five pound wrench to the top of the head, man. We're going to have to give him some brain damage. Here we go. Bang. Have a nice visit to the hospital, sir. Let me, let me uh, sabotage this truck real quick as he's just glitching through the wheel. Completely mangled him. He got mangled. He didn't get killed. He got mangled. Anyway. Next part is a little bit tricky. I tried to go through the back of the truck and then shortly realized that was not possible. And so you just get behind this like little box right here. Watch out for that other dude because he does walk back and forth. You want to wait till he gets stuck over there and then just come into this office. How you doing, sir? Brain damage. We're just giving out brain damage today. Now you're going to wipe the CCTV footage. Like I said, this is vital in being able to do the stealth approach. And then once you get out of the office, you are going to have to take out the remaining officers because we still need to find a key. I don't know what the key is for. There's always some key that you need in these heists and raids, these goddamn keys. But we're going to find the key. We got to find the key card. So we got to finish our uh, endeavor here, our mission. But like I said earlier, man, don't get too worried if you get spotted. I actually get spotted during this mission. It does give you another opportunity to preserve your rights to be able to do the stealth approach. You just have to kill everybody within the factory before the bar pretty much, you know, counts down. So this guy ended up spotting me because he kind of like yelled out as I hit him some way somehow I don't know how I was literally behind him but as you can see that little red bar it's gonna pop up and you just gotta take out like six seven guys you know even if you get caught off rip I think you know off rip for those of you who don't know that slang that means from the beginning um, but if you do get caught in the beginning I think it's still very doable to just kill everybody in here now here's where it gets a little interesting you can make some money from these lockers at the end of the mission I only looted like two or three of the money bags that were in here you can it's optional to stay after to find the key card you can loot the rest of the bags i was just in a rush to get to the finale doing a speed run so i kind of just didn't do it but from the two money bags i got a thousand dollars so i'm assuming each money bag gives you 500 bucks i don't know how many you can loot but i'm assuming it's not worth more than 20k so i mean if you want to sit there and 
loot the whole all the lockers and all the different rooms for twenty thousand be my guest but i have way too much money to you know participate in activities like that i like to just get to the big bucks um but i just thought it was interesting that that is the only set of mission that you can make money from and it also determines whether you do the stealthy or the go loud approach and then you're pretty much just gonna leave steal this truck with the crates which we are going to be using to get in with the stealth approach bring it to vincent's locker mission passed we're good to go as you can see i got a little bit of money for those money bags from the lockers but not much now for the finale this is stealth we do have the stealth approach so as i said we're going to be coming in on these cluck and belt boxes he's going to bring us in on a forklift he has no idea that he just brought the demon inside there's a demon in the Cluck and Bell factory. We're about to wipe these boys out, man. They're not even going to see us coming. We have the professional gear. You get a cool looking mask and a vest. As of right now, I didn't get this outfit after completing the heist with it on. That's normally how it works, though. I'm sure they will add that eventually. And the military grade stuff, you actually get a really cool like military outfit. So you might want to get it done with the military stuff at least once because I'm sure that is how you're going to be able to purchase that outfit. Another key piece of information here if you did pick the wrong weapon loadout for starting this mission you can access it here it's going to be in the garbage can that's the other weapon loadout but we're going to stick with the professional one because that's the trash one that's why it's in a trash can i'm just kidding but if you did pick the wrong weapon loadout for whatever reason you can just open that little door right there and re retrieve it from the trash can now this part right here again pretty self-explanatory you just want to watch their paths take them out one by one of course with headshots if you miss your shots they're going to kind of yell out and alert so you pretty much you know take them out just like Keo Perico style man one tap to the head you want to open this shutter door right here but stay back don't rush through because there is a guy that is going to walk through he gets a little curious and he's like walking over here like he's about to do something or find something out and he gets dropped you should have just stayed where you were at boy but anyway and we're going to make our way through this little shutter door here's where it gets a little bit complicated there's multiple guys that are moving and changing their routes um, but we still got it done. So you want to just pay attention here to what I did. You're going to want to just take cover behind some of those boxes over there. And again, hit them with head taps. The two on the right are going to require you to eliminate two people fast. So you want to make sure when you aim that you're immediately flickering your aim button a little bit up to kind of level it with their head to be able to head tap them. Because again, if you don't hit a headshot, they are going to make a sound or yell out and your, your cover is going to be blown. So let's get moving let's get this done here we are we're walking in stealth stealth approach all black on we're in full character right now head tap bang now here's where you want to do that double head tap so you want to bop bop one two three nice and easy now like i said that guy down the hall he is going to be walking back and forth so you want to make sure to just time it correctly i probably should have took out the guy to the left before he started walking back because it did create a little bit of a pressure situation for me where i had to take this guy out not knowing if the guy to the left was going to see him or not but fortunately he didn't so now we know that we can kill this guy almost right in front of the dude to the left and he won't even see him so as soon as he gets within distance i come out and strike head tap bang the guy on the left didn't even see him now we could take out the guy to the left and then the two up front over there, they are going to walk through the double door. So you don't have to worry about them just yet. But you do have to take this guy out right here. It's a must. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now those two guys, they went through those double doors over there. So we don't got to worry about them. We have free passageway to the first Coke, uh, Coke, you know, locker, storage, whatever you want to call it. And so I was kind of just creeping here because this was my first playthrough. I wasn't sure if they were going to come back through the door or not, but they don't. So as soon as they walk through those doors, you could go ahead and just enter through this first door here. And again, very simple, very self-explanatory. You just go downstairs, take a couple guys out, grab the white stuff, and you're good to go, man. Like I said, this entire raid is very simple, very easy. I'm not sure people would even need a guide for this, but you know, I still got to make the content on it. I'm a GTA content creator, so we got to, you know, talk about it. And just in case, you know, those people that are less experienced than us and not as demonic as us, you know, need a little bit of guidance. That's always fine with me. That's what I'm here for. But anyway, take down the three guys downstairs. We're going to grab all the white stuff and then head back upstairs because the bag is not going to be full. You are going to have to visit a second white stuff lockup within in the factory to be able to fill up this bag and the heist can't be completed without the bag being filled up right 
So through these double doors, you're going to have three guys, one kind of in the middle, one to the right, one to the left. I suggest taking out the one to the left first, then the one in the middle, then the one to the right, because the way that they're facing, they will see each other if you don't do it in that order. Like if you kill the guy in the middle, the guy to the left would see him. If you kill the dude to the right, the guy in the middle would see him, so on and so forth. So the only way to do it is to pretty much take out the guy to the left first, head tap, bang, guy in the middle, head tap, bang, took a little longer than I expected. Here we go. Last guy head tap, bang. And now we could just go right into the second white stuff lockup. See, here's where I messed up though. Here's where they spotted a body because up ahead to the right, there is going to be a guy that's going to kind of walk through those doors, which you'll see later on the area that I'm talking about. But to do this fully stealth, you would have had to just go to that back wall behind me and in, in through the right and uh, kind of take out like two or three more guys and you would have been fine. I didn't. I kind of rushed going into the white lockup first. And it eventually led to him seeing one of the dead bodies. So this, again, is very simple. It's a little different than the other one. You're going to have to grab the wrench from off the plywood stack and just pretty much open all the boxes. Now, if the bag's filled up, we're good to go. But again, they did get spotted because, like I said, back there to the right, there's another little like room where a guy walks in and out. And he did end up seeing one of the dead bodies. So you would initially to do this fully stealth, you would have to just come in here and clean this area out, which is very easy, very simple. Uh, pretty much it would be the same steps as all the other previous, um, you know, rooms that we cleared before this one. But again, even if you get caught, man, this this raid is a piece of cake. I think a level one can definitely do this. We're just going to make our way to the office. You're going to have to hack the computer and then use the hacking device that we stole during one of the set of missions to hack the other computers. And the guys are going to keep coming, these like cartel members. But after you clear all them out, they only come two at a time. Pause, super pause. That was crazy. Here we are using the hacking device. It's going to turn blue when you get closer to the computers that you need to reach. And once it turns fully blue that's the computer you need to get to if it's red that means you're looking in the wrong direction it's then going to give you a safe code you're going to use that safe code to open the safe you're going to grab the extra cash and then make your way out like i said they only appear two at a time so it's not that big of a deal even if you get caught it's very very easy man now a key thing that I want to point out about the escape. Once you get out, if you do get caught in the stealth, there is going to be cops right there. You want to just kill the immediate one so you don't take too much damage. But the pro vest does have damage reduction, so you're not going to take too much damage. And you're pretty much just going to clear out these cartel guys on the way to the getaway vehicle. Once we get to the getaway vehicle, I do want to point out the GPS is going to tell you to go left. And I saw TTG's video where he did go left and it's much, much harder. You want to actually make a right and go through Stab City through the tunnels and it will pretty much get you away from the cops by the time you get out of the tunnels, which you will see what I did later on. That's the route that I took. I, I made a right. I went through Stab City and then just looped around into the city from there. It's much shorter, much faster. Do not make a left. So here we are. We're in our Tesla, our Coil Raiden modeled after a tesla we're gonna make a right like i said on these train tracks instead of a left even though the gps is telling us go left we're gonna make that right go through stab city here we are going through the tunnels i just got a little bit sped up here and you'll see by the time i get out through the tunnels i'm pretty much away from the cops now that helicopter up there almost caught me watch this look look at that mini map my car started spinning out because this thing sucks off road and boom i lost the cops right as he was about to spot me and as earlier very simple you just bring bring the car back to vincent's lockup and it is going to trigger this post scene the outro scene whatever you want to call it the finale scene of the heist where vincent pretty much introduces you to the guy that is going to be buying the white stuff off of us and what do you know it's the same guy from the keo perico heist literally the same dude and and it's just crazy man this guy's our best friend this guy's the reason we're all rich in gta i don't know what his name is i want to call him jose but i don't want to get a lot of hate comments for calling him jose so i'm just gonna call him the ko perico guy anyway vincent then shows off to us that he got the new hellcat police car which looks absolutely awesome and of course completing this a lot also allows us to purchase this car it does cost four million dollars once you complete the heist if you don't complete the heist and you want to just buy it before doing it it will cost you i think five and a half million so definitely finish the heist before buying this car you save one and a half million dollars and like i said it's a pretty good looking car now you're going to see on the screen that it tells me, you know, 500,000 payout. So now some of you are probably wondering, well, why'd you put 850,000 on the thumbnail? You clickbaited me. 
No, I did not. No, I did not. Blanco does not clickbait. The reason I put 850,000 on the thumbnails, because as you will see, once I finish the heist, you do get $250,000 bonus for completing this raid slash heist for the first time. So that brings us to 750,000. And there's also the weekly challenge at the time of this recording, you get $100,000 for completing the, uh, you know, cluck and bell farm raid. So you'll see it right here. When I pull out my phone to put my money in the bank, it goes from 500 to 750. And then shortly after the 750, see, there you go. 751. We got the 250 K bonus. And then immediately as I closed my phone, I got another hundred thousand dollar bonus for the weekly challenge. So your first time running this, you will get $850,000. And anytime after that, it will be just worth 500,000. Now, I did want to give my feedback on whether or not I think that this raid slash heist is worth it. And I will say this, I think for beginner players, it is 100% worth it because it's a contact mission. You could immediately, as soon as jumping in the game with a brand new character, have a way to make $500,000, which is, which is awesome, especially for beginner players. For veteran players, I'd say the first time running it this week where you can make the 850,000, it's semi worth it. But when you take the time into consideration, and this is where it disappoints me a little bit, the time to complete this raid between all the setups and finale is going to be about an hour and a half in some cases two hours depending how good you are at the game and as a gta content creator i do want to support any dlc rockstar gives us because i am of course grateful very grateful that they're still adding to the game 10 years later but i also have to be honest i have to be honest with my viewers my community and my subscribers and to be honest man an hour to a, i mean an hour and a half to uh you know two hours to get 500,000 and in some case and first time doing it 850 is decent but 500,000 for an hour and a half of work is really not worth it in my opinion I, I enjoyed my experience and I'll probably run it from time to time just to mix it up and do something different in Grand Theft Auto Online but I, I don't see it being one of the main ways that I make money but it definitely was a cool addition and I appreciate it shout out to Rockstar for adding this into the game and that pretty much wraps us up I hope you guys enjoyed the guide if it helped in any way or if you just enjoyed the viewing please leave a like and subscribe hit that bell notification to stay up to date with any and all uploads i do make consistent gta content on this channel and it only takes one second of your time and it means the absolute world to me until the next video peace out boys